Unity just released support for virtual reality headsets that don't actually exist. Yeah, you heard right. Let's dive into Unity 6.1's XR updates. The good, the bad, and the downright bizarre. It's me, Fistful of Shrimp. If you're new here, I help Unity developers create better VR and AR experiences, and I do in general game dev tutorials. Starting off with the good, looks like Unity has released a new mixed reality multiplayer tabletop template. Ooh. That was fun to say. I'm gonna create a project right now, dive into it, and use it to see what this new engine can do. Now, the mixed reality template seems to be straightforward. Now, one nice thing is you do have to set up Unity services, but they are really good at holding your hand through the whole process and explaining everything here on the side as you click next, 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 next. Now, once you've gone through all the setup, you can see here we have a very, very cool looking scene here where we can dive into VR or mixed reality. Wow, that is trippy. But yeah, it's a, it's very well design. Now, testing out this application, I gotta say it has been a lot of fun, and I think you should jump in. This is gonna be part of the big good that Unity has added in 6.1. What do you think? Now, on top of the networking things that you can go through, it also gives you sample scene example overviews that you can branch through and explains everything going on in the project. It's a very well thought out template showing you how to make a mixed reality multiplayer tabletop game. I mean, I think it covers a lot of ground. So hooray, Unity, thank you for this in 6.1. Very excited about this. Now, another one that I want to talk about on the good side of things is variable rate shading, which you can see right here. So essentially what we're going to be able to do is kind of map out where we want different areas on our screens and have them adjust the shading. So like it says, it's a variable rate. So you can have some areas that'll have a lesser resolution and other areas that'll have a higher resolution. You can see here on their forums that they actually have a very good example. Maybe I can enhance this. There we go. So yeah, this is from the Unity forum. And you can see here the different variable rates that they have going on here. And so there's more of a higher resolution run where the car is because, well, that's kind of what you want to have. Uh, to have like a higher resolution is where you're normally looking. Honestly, I don't think too much unless you're doing something very niche and you want to have that control. Instead, we are going to be using foveated rendering, which has already been released. And essentially, it's going to either track the center of your eyepiece or if the headset you're targeting is, it does have eye tracking, then it'll target the eye tracking where they're focusing on the screen. And that center will have a higher resolution and then the peripheral will have a lesser resolution. It's essentially how our eyes already operate as is. And just another way to squeeze out a little more juice, a little more, a little more juice, a little more performance out of these headsets. I mean, you can see here, they do come from the same place. So XR platforms implement foveated rendering with a variety of techniques, such as variable rate shading, go figure, and variable rate rasterization. So although we've already had access to foveated rendering for some time, I guess you could say now we have even more control if you want to create your own customized version of it. Uh, yeah, that looks like it could be a thing that you might be able to do with 6.1. Hey, you know what else is hanging out in the cool aisle? Look at this. So this is Unity 6.0. And let me hop over to a Unity 6.1 project. You see this right here? You see this? This is a build profile exactly or specifically for MetaQuest. So it looks like in 6.1, we have have finally gotten the long awaited for specific build profile for the MetaQuest, which is fantastic if you're a VR or XR or AR developer. Looks like we also have some other ones. I mean, Vision OS has actually been there for a while, but yeah, it looks like we are finally getting this build profile, which I'm incredibly excited for. Like now, granted, could we have, you know, added a build profile and just made our own? Sure, and customized it to be optimized for the MetaQuest, but you know what? They've now they've they've made us our own little build profile here, and it comes with a logo. Come on. This is good. I'm excited. All right. Now it's time for the section on the bad. And well, I'm not going to say this is exactly bad. Maybe it's a little misleading. Whatever. I chose a motif for this video. All right. So this is the bad. And the bad is going to be deferred plus rendering. Look, it's cool tech. I wish we got to play with it. Sadly, for most VR developers, we're going to be developing for the Quest 3, Quest 2. And that's essentially a mobile device. And the way that it does rendering, it d will not play well with deferred or deferred deferred plus rendering so we don't get to have fun with that we don't to get to come in here click this button and have it say deferred plus and see how many lights we can pump into a scene that is not available to well you can do it 
I will say, if you are doing VR development for PC or, you know, something like the Valve Index or anything like that, then you can utilize the strength of deferred rendering or deferred plus rendering because you have the strength of typically a very strong high-end GPU. So, yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I had to find something for the bad section, and for me, it's just going to be, oh, as VR XR developers, we don't get to play with this new little rendering path that they've given us unless you're primarily building for PC. So, yeah, what I've chosen chosen for the bad in this section is just the fact that we don't get to play with Deferred Plus as VR or XR developers, and that's okay. You know, if you are developing for PC, you might want to explore and see if you can use Deferred Plus and see how many lights you can pump into a scene and make it gorgeous. But sadly, this one, for the most part, is going to be out of reach for us. And now we come to the bizarre part of my video, where I talk about what Unity 6.1 has brought us, which is support for Google's Android XR platform. Now, there's only one goofy thing about that, and it's the fact that there's no Android XR devices yet. I mean, technically there is with the Quest, sure. The Quest is an Android device and can run Android XR, but there hasn't been official hardware released for Google under their Android XR platform. As you might remember or heard, Meta has their own. They have Horizon OS is what they're trying to cook with. But underneath that, obviously, is Android. So you could just do an Android build profile, but we have this Meta Quest profile, and now we have Android XR. Are. Hooray! Just what I wanted. More fragmentation and confusion. Now, none of this is Unity's fault. The fragmentation stuff, that's just happening because you have a bunch of different companies trying to fight over control for this market. And I have to commend them. They promised us, they said they want us to be able to deploy to as many platforms as possible, as quickly and easily as possible. And that's what they're doing. They are future proofing their platforms so we can deploy to Android XR, MetaQuest, Android, and Vision OS. We'll be able to hit pretty much every single target that we're after so we can sell our games or applications to as many platforms as possible. So hats off to Unity. They said that they're aiming to do this and they are doing it. In fact, they're ahead of schedule, at least with Android. So overall, what do I think of Unity 6.1 as an XR developer? It's okay. You know, there's nothing big and shiny for us to really play with here. You know, you might want to come in here and try out these different build settings and see if you can customize them for each platform. I mean, who, who are we kidding, though? You're going to be deploying to the Quest every single time. Uh, unless, you know, you got that kind of money, you got a Vision OS. We have more access to the vari variable rate shading, which if you want to experiment with, you're more than welcome to. But for the most part, foveated rendering, which has already been in the platform for a bit, it, yeah, it's, it's already been there and that's should be the one that you're kind of using anyways, because it's already specialized for virtual reality. So yeah, uh, my thoughts on 6.1, it's okay. Upgrade if you want to experiment and have fun, but otherwise you're probably going to be fine hanging out in 6.0 for now. Let me know what you think in the comments below about 6.1 and some of these features, or maybe I missed one that you thought I should have mentioned. Please let me know about that one as well, and I will see you all in the next one. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 it's pretty good.